close. It doesn't matter. It's inappropriate. It's not inappropriate. It makes me ill during the meeting. Okay. I'll keep that in mind for future meetings. <laughs> okay. Yes. We'll call the meeting to order. Let's uh, stand, face the flag, and if you're so inclined, recite the Pledge of Allegiance with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, looks like uh, we're all present here. Um, any additions, subtractions, changes of any kind? We will have one under um, personnel report under um, custodians. We'll remove that item for tonight. We just need to get a signature and they're out of the country. So. Okay, with the exception, making that change, anything else? I would look for a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second. Brenda, on the motion. This time I've ever been first. <laughs> <laughs> she is on the ball. On the second. <laughs> Any other discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. The approval of the minutes from the April 28th meeting. Has everyone had a chance to review those? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. That would be a yes. Motion by Rob. I'll second. Seconded by Kurt. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> that is carried. Okay. Scheduled presenters. Mr. Bell, targeted services present. The floor is yours. All right. And the walls is here. I do have a short slideshow. <coughs> Pictures are worth a thousand more. Um, and board members, I, I put some uh, a packet of papers. Uh, should be somewhere in there. It's, it's really a series of, of various information that pertains to, to target services. So we we'll go over just a few of the, the legislative things and, and some of the specifics with regards to our our specific program. And then we're going to open it up for questions. Um, so, and, and the paperwork, um, the, the, the first sheet is really just an overview of, of our Summer Bomber Academy. The, the next two pages are actually a registration form that went home to families, just for your information. And the last piece is a, a continuous learning plan that I will talk about in the presentation. So, <clears throat> to give you a little background, uh, in the legislature says that only sites that have uh, the approval or access to an area learning center with the middle level component are allowed to tap into targeted services funding. And because GCD has opened up a middle level ALC over at, in Red Wing that we can send kids to, we don't currently right now, but we have the opportunity to, that allows us to tap into this money uh, through the state. So this is why we've jumped all over this. Uh, this is, you know, money. This this program is completely funded through the state. Um, nothing comes out of our, our own budget. Again, it's state funded. It's a by invitation only uh, that offers academically targeted students extra support, but it also it builds our 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 social emotional skills as well as we can we can tie into that organizational piece uh, that I know Tim had. had talked about you know looking at those middle school kids and, and helping them work on their organizational skills. What it's not, it's not homework help. Um, the summer piece nor any of the, the school year pieces, it's not about helping kids get homework. It's about targeting their specific needs and providing uh, support for that. In a nutshell, and, and to, to tie it back to something that we're familiar with, it's RTI outside of the normal school day. It's exactly what it is. Um, we, it has to be taught by highly qualified teachers. We actually have our own staff that are teaching here. So, I mean, it's a win-win for our kids and our, our teachers. So, 
So getting into specifics, that's a little bit on the, the state level and the legislature and GCD. Um, what we've now come up with is, we're calling it Bomber Academy. We want to give it that positive um, connotation. It's, it's not a summer school. It is, but it's, it's more targeted for that. Um, so it's, it's students entering first through eighth grade, or current K through seventh grade kids. Uh, we are going to run it Monday through Thursday from 8 to 11 uh, in the morning and through Ju or from July 28th through August 14th. We kind of picked those dates this, this current summer because it coincides with, coincides with our ESY program for our special ed population. So uh, some kids don't qualify for that, yet they could use extra help, so that's why we wanted to, to do that. Um, and plus it should help the transportation costs um, with the district because we can be able to transport the kids at the same time. Uh, again, transportation is included in our budget, so we are budgeting for the transportation piece as well as breakfast and snacks for the kids. So everything is completely free to the families, uh, and we make the, the effort to make sure we pick them up and drop them off. Uh, and we, you know, we're, we're hoping to, to keep a ratio of, of around you know, 13 to 16 to 1 um, for staff to students, and really with the help of um, we, we're, we're able to bring in some paras, and also we've got a couple of volunteers that are willing to come in um, through the foster parent program. So we've got a lot of adults, so really our ratio is much lower than that, which is only good for kids. So a couple other things about our Bomber Academy um, and and about the, the state <coughs> legislature is that parents must sign the registration form. We cannot just put the kid in there. The teachers must recommend the students. Um, to be part of the program. We cannot just throw everybody and anyone in there. So we specifically target those students that need help in, the, in those areas that I touched on earlier. But every kid must have a CLP, and that's included in your packet. It's really just a, a information about the kid that will follow them for at least three years. We have to keep those records um, on site for three years, minimally. And the teachers, you know, we had a meeting today with the, the teachers that are going to be teaching this, and one of the first things they asked is, do we have access to those CLPs? Well, absolutely they do. That's, that's information that allows them to differentiate their instruction even more. Um, so, and really it's, <clears throat> it allows the, the teachers to kind of justify why they were um, recommended so, to the parents in the case they were to question. Um, but really, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, flexibility with getting kids into uh, Bomber Academy because we can always look at that social piece or social emotional piece uh, as well as the organization. We will continue during the school year so just so you're not thinking that Bomber Academy is only a summer school program. It is not. It is an all year program. We just chose to start it this summer. Ideally I would have gotten it up and running earlier this school year but it's just not, uh, it just didn't come together quite as, as quickly as we wanted to. Uh, we've worked very closely with Brian Cashman at GCD, and uh, he's helped us get the, the process up and running and the application into the Department of Ed. So we're looking at possibly after school classes, probably you know um, more so as opposed to morning classes, just because of our early start. And you know we're looking at two days a week, but that is still yet to be determined. And um, Mr. O'Keefe, who will be coming on board with us as the associate principal, hopefully he'll. Uh, be taking over that. Have to talk more about that later. Any questions? Eric, is that going to be separate from the IT ITI program? RTI? School? Yeah. It will be. It's, it will be a, it's an extent. It's actually an extension of it. When they come back into the school, <coughs> it's still an extension of what's happening here during the school year. The uh, the yeah. Bomber Academy. In the in the fall, I mean, in the, yeah. during the school year, it's an extension. So every kid that's in RTI yeah. will be recommended to be in, in Bomber Academy. Which is okay. They might not, you know, depending on parent um, choice, but they're the ones that are being recommended for this. So they're getting an extension of what they're learning throughout right. the school day. Okay. So, and we're going to try and differentiate as much as we can. You know, if the kids need work in fluency, we're going to provide them with that fluency support. In the summer, we're able to do that much more effectively because of, you know, the amount of time we have the kids. We're going to have them for three hours, you know, per day. Mm -hmm. and, and you can do a lot during that time. As opposed to during the school year, after school, you know, let's say we run it 
three to four. You might want, you probably don't want to do much more than four, maybe three to four thirty. That still just doesn't give you a whole lot of time to do a lot. So the summer is where we really want to target it anyway, just to, to help that summer slide and bridge that gap between the end of this school year and the beginning of next, and get the kids into that um, school mentality again. So I'm excited about it. Uh, I think it's a fantastic opportunity to kids. This is a no cost thing to the district. Um, you know, it's all ge money gener generated from the Department of Ed, so might as well tap into it. Are there any measurable outcomes, or isn't that isn't that how you would judge this? Would you judge it more about not having the summer slide, so to speak? Yes. Are, are there measurable outcomes that we need to, to report to MDE? No. It's all on us. Um, you know, we will continue to look at the effectiveness of the program. You know, I'm excited already to, to pull out those kids that are that are in Bomber Academy and look at their Ames Web, their STAR, and, and or MCA scores and look to see their growth compared to the others. Um, so we're very much, you know, hoping to be able to do that. What, what kind of numbers are you looking for, or isn't there? There's 110 kids already. Currently we've got 110 kids already signed up for the summer. Oh, wow. wow. We were expecting, we were hoping for 60. We're running three bus routes to go pick everybody up. Mm -hmm. So. At least. How, how many <laughs> yeah. were invited? Because it's by invitation only. Yep, yep. I, we don't know that. Uh, oh. We didn't actually, because it's. we just handed the, we handed out, I think 15 to every teacher just said, you know, this doesn't go home with every kid, but, you know, fill these out for who, who you think would, would be, um, would qualify, and then grab more as you need. So we don't know exactly how many that would be, but, you know, I know our numbers in RTI, and I would guess we're probably about 50 to 60 percent are signed up. I mean, 110 kids is a fourth of our school, so <coughs> it's incredible, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Giving it's, up summer? To mm -hmm. know that they're going to be getting that extra dose of, of academics during the summer, I, 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 how can I not be excited? Yeah. Right. So can we get a follow-up in this fall once you've done the summer program to see how the program just worked as well. Yeah, we'll have Mr. O'Keefe do, that. do that. This will be, this will be, this is something Derek's <laughs> really excited <laughs> to hand off. <laughs> he's, oh. done, he's done a really good job with it, but it'll be okay. nice to see, remember when we talked about it, it's, kind of, it's kind of some of those unfunded mandates. I mean, this is in that ballpark where it's great to have these services, but someone has to be in charge of it. Right. So, yeah. How do you determine when they graduate from the Bomber Academy? Is it, if it starts in the semester, in the fall, do they carry through the whole semester with the academy, or can can it's like okay, you, you met your goals now, uh, you know this isn't a well, program that's necessary be, for the school. I think it could be really similar to what Tim does, you know, with some of his extension help with the kids, you know, that that take me maybe like Mr. Swanson's class or something like that, you know, instead of missing two class periods, maybe they, you know, a week they go to one, something like that. I mean, I think the, it's, the criteria for. Um, yeah, go back. For qualification and targeted services <laughs> is the same as it is for the criteria for um, ALC or, or anything like that. So, um, and there are 12 different criteria, and if you ask me for what all 12 of those are right now, I can't tell you, but the ones that are basically going to um, impact our middle school and elementary school students are um, below grade level in reading and math um, and, and social emotional. You know, socially and socially. So they probably would so. carry through the whole semester. Then you do an assessment at that. Yeah, time. I mean, yeah. it's it's one of those things. As long as as long as the staff believes that they still fit that criteria, then then they they can still be in that program. Okay. And one thing we haven't really discussed yet um, is: do we want to have the parents re-register every session? You know, because my I envision us running this program right after conferences mm -hmm. in the fall. Because that gives us, the teachers, a, a good chunk of time to get to know the kids and then also a chance to, to talk about that, about the students with their parents at conference times and, and actually physically hand them the registration saying, you know what, here's where I've noticed that, that your student might, might benefit from this program. Here's a registration form if you're interested. And then running it up till Christmas maybe, mm -hmm. um, you know, or something like that. And then again, we've got conferences coming up again for elementary at least in uh, January. Then gives us you know a time to say, hey, we're going to run another session. You know, we'll run that up until spring break or something. Um, so 
again, th that piece of things were, were, we haven't really been able to focus on, we're really working on just a summer piece, but that's all I envision now. So, so what you're saying is, once enrolled, they would continually have to re-enroll, or they we could just know. keep going as long as they fit the criteria, and every quarter or every semester you would offer the program to new kids you if know. you felt, or could it be offered in between semesters? Would that work or not? Yes, all of the above. Um, like I said, I, we haven't really given that much thought yet, but I'm just kind of thinking out loud. So. Thank you. Good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We like greetings. All of that. Nothing's always. Okay, moving down. Number six, the uh, finance report. Uh, that would be your first sheet there would be the uh, cash flow. Um, some things to note down there. Um, started to work on the cash flow for the next fiscal year. Um, have to start on but once the budget is approved, then I can plug in more information. So there'll be further information here or data. Um, up on top in the middle there, your checking account balance, 2.1 million or so. Um, kind of things to note on the revenue side would be the Gutu County the property taxes will be coming in uh, end of May, beginning of June, and then the energy payment as well will come at the end of May uh, with another portion coming from the city in the middle of June. Uh, it looks like roughly cash flow wise, uh, cash uh, at the end of the fiscal year would be about 2.5 million uh, estimated right now. Um, next page is going to be uh, the Comparison of last month that's been reconciled, so that's April 2004 versus April 2013. Um, as far as summary of the uh, data here goes for general fund, um, we spent down the general fund about 250000 from uh, the beginning of the month to the end of the month, and we'll talk about that. It's really a large portion of it has to do with the retro payments uh, for futures, almost a, a full uh, calendar year's worth of, of retro pay. But, um, as you see, most of the funds are pretty much at where we were at this point last year, a little comparable, uh, other than debt service, which is about $150,000 behind at this point last year. And that's because we uh, weren't able to manually reduce our debt service uh, levy this past year. And then also the OPEB Trust, uh, we had withdrawn funds to help cover for other employment retirees benefits. Um, so that is expected to be seen. Uh, next couple page is going to be the detail if you want to see what kind of happens. Uh, each month out of each of the funds. And again, really the only thing that's going to really stick out um, in all the funds here for the month of April is going to be the retro pay of the teachers. Um, and as I indicated, uh, part way down the column of the general fund there, uh, the retro pay is 71000 plus, and then the taxes on that, as well as the payroll liability. So um, you look at the net activity of fiscal year 13 for fund one versus uh, O2, about $240,000 difference, we spent more in April, and a large portion of that again would be for the, the retro case. Um, rather than having it come out all throughout the fiscal year, it all came out in, in April up to this point. So, um, you know, the other funds are pretty much consistent with what happened last year. If you have any questions, I can certainly do my best to, to answer what you have. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to accept the financial report. I'll second. Motion by Rob, seconded by Jerry. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. <coughs> Cut off easy there, John. I see. Old business consideration to approve the new members of the CF Education Foundation, attachment C. Has everyone had a chance to review those? Some are procedural for us, they're kind of an autonomous group to some degree, but I think we follow I'll make procedure. A, I'll make a motion for Thank you, Brenda. The members of the foundation. I'll second. Motion by Brenda, seconded by Kurt. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Consent agenda items under new business. Taking a look at uh, all three of our items on there, they're considered routine. We can enact them in one motion or you can separate them out if you wish. Anyone have any questions on any of the items? I guess we're removing the one item, right? You're removing the top custodial item, that's yeah. correct. Oh, 
I'll make a motion for it. A second. Motion by Jerry, seconded by Rob. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Yeah. Approval of expenditures. Taking a look, would that be attachment G? I noticed a couple for um, features I call a $14,000 one and then another one. Is that, is that usually high or is that, is that? No, it's that time of year and you've got a lot of um, spring staff development things going on. Okay. Yeah. It's a little higher than usual, but it, it coincides real closely with the end of the year, just sub usage. I'll make a motion to approve the expenditures. I'll second. Pretty straightforward, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Motion by Kurt, seconded by Rob. Yep. Other discussion? I just have one question. Sure. The uh, number 42179. At the uh, final billing for the storm removal for fiscal year 14, um, just a question too, but the total amount that we paid for the contract plus the overage at the end of the year was less than what we would pay if we had zero tolerance. Um, it's slightly less than that total. Period. Right. So we came out ahead. Slightly. We did. Yeah. Slightly. Had we had an extra inch or so of snow, we just have a snow that mm -hmm. went to bed. This wouldn't be there. But we did. We originally started with the zero tolerance. It was like sixty some thousand. So whenever it snowed, we called them. And they came. Uh, we went to a two inch this year. Yeah. So when we got less than that, which we did, we call it special, but it's still less than it would have been if we got the zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I was looking at to go, was that a good call to make? And this is a two-year contract, right? right? Yeah, so we'll be here like that. What really helped, too, is Dave kept immaculate notes of when he called and why he called and text message. I mean, he wrote whether he texted them or called them or whatever. So kudos to Dave that that matched up really well with the bill. You did a good job with that. Because yeah, we you. get the bill now, and this started in November, December. I did talk to Zippy about that, and he is willing to do end of each month. It's more work for them, but for Josh to try to figure out what that's going to be is just a guessing game. So he said he'd work with us next year on it, so let's see if we can do something with that. Okay, any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Consideration to approve the fall head coaches attachment H. I'll make a motion to approve. A second. Motion by Jerry, seconded by Rob. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Consideration to approve the preliminary 1415 budget, including CE attachment I. Yeah. The extra sheet that we in your packet. Um, this is just a very brief summary of it. Just by fund uh, revenues for each fund, expenses for each fund. Um, I've got a five page summary that goes by program, and then there's a 72 page line by line item with every code. Uh, this gets down to the very base of it. Uh, general fund uh, expenditures over revenue is about four hundred thousand dollars. And just to explain uh, where that's going in the revenues, there's the drop off of the five hundred and two dollar per pupil referendum, and that was replaced with the three hundred dollar board approved <coughs> referendum. Plus, we received four hundred twenty four dollars uh, location equity for a seven twenty four. Uh, so there's an increase of revenue there in the general fund and. Uh, from where we end up at with revised 14 versus initial 15, uh, we come in at about 300 plus $350,000 extra revenue in the general fund. Uh, expenditures is where uh, we get hit a little bit, and just uh, before we take a quick hard swallow on, the, on that, is the fund balance going into fiscal year 15 will be at about $1.5 million. Uh, with this preliminary budget, if everything were to hit all the way through, uh, we hit all the expenditures, all the revenues at the end of the fiscal year. We'd be at about $1.1 million in the fund balance at the end of 15, which I know we had some discussions that that's kind of a, an area where the board felt we could kind of, kind of live and manage with. 
I would make some decisions then for fiscal year 16 budget and uh, what we don't want to do and what would be necessary. But um, it, even when I was going through myself and I saw the numbers kind of made me choke back a little bit. But um, you think about things we've done to try to catch up with some things, the teacher contract being a big one, other contracts being settled, um, the assistant principal adding that, and adding some expenditures that were really necessary to the district uh, were good things to add. But um, especially payroll ones, salary and benefits, those are ones that are going to hit on a continual annual basis. So um, uh, there's some money built in there for security systems, some money built in there for technology. Um, we got four buses that we're leasing, it's all in the budget. Um, so I feel pretty confident with where the expenditures are at. Um, and just so you guys have a good understanding that the fund balance will still be fairly healthy by the end of fiscal year 15. It's just at the end of fiscal year 15, we'll start looking at 16, we're going to have to make decisions on what we want to do, whether it's uh, cutting or referendum or that sort of issue. But um, it is overspending, but it is what it is with the fund balance at the end of fiscal year, just so you're kind of aware of that. And like I said, I have the detail of all this in my office. And if anyone wants to come down and kind of look through the program, the program might be more willing to, to spend all that time with you. Uh, other funds, food service, uh, look about uh, $12,000 deficit. And again, uh, plugged in what may be high or what may be low for salary, kind of kind of go where it's at, um, and then we'll adjust from there. Uh, and Wayne does a great job of keeping control of food costs and whatnot there. So um, we'll look kind of, this is again, the preliminary budget community ed. Uh, same deal there. Uh, some things were done in contracts there to help get things to where they probably uh, should be added and kind of held back for a while. Um, you see a little bit of depth spending there. But again, both these funds, uh, food service and community ed service, uh, by the time the end of the fiscal year 15 is done, they both will have positive balances. Uh, debt service, uh, you'll see uh, about $104,000 extra revenue over expenditures for debt service. Uh, the reason being there is our, our debt service payment is what it is. Uh, it's set, but the county collects 5% extra. They collect 105%. So uh, you'll see an extra built in there for revenue. If we get to the end of fiscal year and we see that we have an excess in debt service, we could possibly manually reduce that um, to bring it down to what the need is. We don't have to tax uh, the community as much. Uh, again, that'll be as audit gets complete and we see where we're exactly at. Trust and agency is a scholarship fund. Uh, especially with the way interest is now, we're not going in a lot of interest off of those accounts, so that's been kind of spent down each year. Again, that fund balance will end up being about $100,000 at the end of fiscal year 15. Uh, OPEP Trust, uh, that's being paid down year by year. We take a draw on that of roughly $100,000 each year to help pay for other uh, post-employment retiree benefits, so you'll naturally see that one dip down each year until it's done. And then the OPEP Debt Service is a payment on that, that bond or that payment, right? Uh, so again, hopefully, kind of give you the groundwork of what's going on there. Uh, if you have any questions, either um, you know now or you want to see in my office, I'm more than willing to help anything. Uh, and again, I'll try to do my best to answer any questions you have now, too. Uh, <coughs> this is an off year for our legislative session, but uh, possibility, probability, or we don't just, you want to deal with that right now? <laughs> well, it's in my superintendent report. We can talk about it. Um, we've been hearing a lot about a 1%. It looks like today they're looking at $25 per student or a 0.4 increase. Um, and that's as of today. So yeah. we'll see where it all lands. And it's, if you put a number on it, it's about $30,000. Right. Yeah. You know, the 1%. But it is, again, Bob alluded to it. It's, it's a non-funding year, so to get nothing would be highly expected so to get something even if it is $25 per student but you know I think Josh and I are sitting there hoping and figuring on $58 per student um, so we'll see where everything lands but as of today it's $25 <coughs> per student they moved uh, money around again to the the big metro schools and I'll go over that in my report <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the preliminary 1415 budget motion by Kurt I'll second it seconded by Rob other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Consideration to approve the elementary handbook. Derek, is that you? Yeah, there really wasn't a whole lot of changes. We, we obviously changed the PLC days to reflect the, the early outs as opposed to late starts. Um, we are going back to bus passes to allow our, our Secretaries to write a bus pass for a student to go home from those if they have parent permission. Lunch and breakfast prices, depending on what happens here tonight. Um, the trimesters reflect that we're moving to trimesters next year and 
and we changed the report card piece um, and how parents can access that. So nothing really too major, but those are the highlights. I'll make a motion, bro. Motion by Jerry. One second. Second by Brenda. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Consideration to approve the mandatory minimum lunch price increase of a nickel. You know, this one can get really tricky. I know Lori and I have had a million conversations on this, Wendy as well. Um, our HBL superintendents met, and everyone's really all over the board on this. Um, you've heard a lot of recent legislation on providing lunch for free for students and, and getting a rate of free and reduced and having it all free if you qualify. Um, with that said, a lot of it came like, oh, let's slow down. Now we don't need to race to that magical $2.62 for a, for a lunch price. Instead, let's slow down a little bit. But then the last we heard, Lori and I agree with this, is that um, you know we still need to get to that magical number of $2.62 by 2016. So we're, we're getting mixed messages on which way we should be going on this. Half of the HVL is going to just stay fast. They're going to keep their lunch prices where they're at because, like us, they have a pretty good solid food program. The ones that are struggling are going to jump up that 5 or 10 cents. Um, whatever you decide to do tonight is really fine with me. Just know that what's currently, and Lori, stop me if I say anything incorrectly here, if you need to know that it does need to be at $2.62 by the end of 2016. So you can jump if they make you finally jump. I think we're hearing enough talk that that may never ever happen. I mean, how can you force, if we have money in our accounts, how can you force us to make parents pay $2.62? Right, and, and that may be what happens. So, you know, the idea is over the next three years, do you slowly want to get to that price or do you want to wait and jump at the end? Our recommendation is here, it's five cents. Some districts are going 10. Um, it's wherever your comfort zone is at. How far away are we? That's just gonna say. We are at what? Um, <coughs> we're at uh, two thirty-five right now. So we should take us to two forty, two forty-five. Then we'd have to go up another twelve cents. Yeah. Seventeen. Whatever it is, it's a big jump at right. one point but in time. If it if it comes to it, you right. know, to reality. And if they decide not to, then we can still hold that. We can hold where we would be at. Yeah, I think there's just so many different opinions on this. I think Lori and I agree that we need to keep making motion mm -hmm. in that direction, mm -hmm. just in case. But I don't think any of us need to be in a race to get there. We certainly don't want to be making money in our food department. I want kids to have great meals at a great price that parents, you know, don't have to break the bank to go get. So. And you know, we are getting a little bit of conversation with the new federal regulations. Kids aren't getting as much food. We increase the price. And if their kids like Rob's three boys, you know, they're, they're, they are getting less food and less calories. And it's really a nutritious, beautiful meal. But there are some kids that are saying, you know, that they're not getting as much food for more price. So I'm just kind of off the beaten path with that. But how do you, how do you deal with that? I mean, you, you've got growing kids that really need more than what they're being served at lunch. Well, we've been lucky that we've got, we, right now you can still do a la carte. That's mm -hmm. going to go away really soon too. Mm -hmm. right. um, so it's going to get really interesting. You know, some kids bring a kind of a snack for the afternoon. I see kids that have got things up in their lockers mm -hmm. and it's all very healthy food that they keep in their lockers. I, I've never seen a Pop-Tart box ever. <laughs> it's really weird how healthy the food is. Just who drives that? At what legislative level does it, is that decision that's made? That's federal. Mostly? That is not state. Federal. That is all federal. Okay. Right, Lori? Yes, that's food in the attachment. Food, food and Drug Administration. It's, it's all in there, but it's it's the federal components. It's not state. So. It's page People 19 no kids. in your packet. 19 through 24. Do they have growing boys and girls? And mm -hmm. Obviously, no. <laughs> they don't. Well, you know, our recommendation tonight is to do the five cents, but I completely understand if you want to modify um, the recommendation. I, I think Lori and I would be good with anything, so. Well, I'll make a motion to approve because I don't want to get caught on okay. kind of one okay. side or the other. I just wanted you to know the whole yep. skinny <clears throat> Motion by Jerry, seconded by Kurt. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Good things here in our next couple, yeah. our next three. 
consideration to hire Josh Olson, secondary social teacher, for the 14-15 year. As sad as I am to see Tony Meyer retire, um, I, you know, this was a first for me at Cannon Falls that every single person that we interviewed, the interview, whole interview team felt like they would be great fits on our staff. And uh, it was a really hard decision. But Josh um, has got great experience. Um, he is currently teaching in the Dover Unit School District, but he is a Cannon Falls resident. Um, he has taught kind of the gamut of social studies, uh, middle school, high school. Um, you know, he's doing a lot of college level type things in Dover Yoda right now. He's got some ALC experience. He's got some really great um, technology background. Um, so he, you know, fit all of the criteria that we wanted to right, right off the bat. So um, I think it would be a great addition to our staff. Plus he's known by lots of people on staff too. So he was a candidate grad. So he accepted. What's that? And he accepted. Did he accept it? Yeah, he accepted very happily. <laughs> yes. He was so excited. I used to hear you say that. I, I, I know. <laughs> it hasn't happened. Tim didn't know what to do. <laughs> I'll have to interview again. I'll okay. make a motion. Motion by Brenda. Approved. I'll second. Seconded by Rob to approve Josh's hire. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Consideration to hire Matt Addington, elementary art teacher for the 14-15 school year. Derek? Yeah, uh, well, <clears throat> you know, we had uh, really great interview uh, candidates, and um, Matt is, is coming to us. Um, you know, he's actually a, a Cannibal's resident as well, and, um, you know, he's got, comes to us with experience, but really his, his uh, enthusiasm for teaching art is really what stood out in my mind. Um, you know, he's got amazing technology abilities uh, that I think will enhance the, the, the staff and everything that we do um, at the elementary and just just a fun guy and I think uh, he'll fit in well, so we're excited to have him. And he's coming from Kenya you want to go, correct? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, make I'll make a motion to approve. No, I'll second. Motion by Jerry, seconded by Kurt. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. And the third of our hires here, consideration to hire Michael O'Keefe. Now we had a teacher named O'Keefe here. Oh, he's O'Keefe. Okay, <laughs> just so we get that square. Associate principal for the 14-15 school year. Maybe we can ask the gentleman to uh, introduce himself. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, <laughs> as our chairperson said, I'm Michael O'Keefe. I am coming from Rosemount. I currently teach in District 196. I've been in education for 15 years. And uh, I interviewed with these lovely people and fell in love immediately with the whole Bomber tradition. And I'm super excited to join the Cannon Falls family. So thanks for having me. And that and that really is why we picked him. Uh, it because he called you lovely. <laughs> no, he, it's like, he just kept telling us how nice we were. <laughs> that was the yeah. greeters, Lori and I. Yeah, <laughs> you know it was good. I just have to tell a really quick little side story. Um, there was a discipline issue. Of course, you've got all the principals in here. Me, we're all taking. You know, we're interviewing, and all of a sudden there's a discipline issue, and they thought Tim was gone, so they bring him down here that I could handle it, and they come into the office. And poor Michael thought it was part of the interview. <laughs> like, oh, they want me to hop in maybe and help with this, <laughs> with this this <laughs> discipline issue. Ready to go. And I was like, this is real life. <laughs> <laughs> real life on the spot. Yeah. But no, in all seriousness, um, that we had amazing candidates. Um, we had almost fifty some apply, and wow. we interviewed eight. And um, it was very obvious to us that he, he that that family feel that we've talked about. It's more than just being an administrator here. It's it's about putting up with me and Derek and Tim and, and um, wearing a lot of hats. And every single thing that we asked him, he was willing to do or would find out how to do it or whatever. So um, we're really excited. He's, he's a great candidate. you got to keep asking until he says no. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, he, and he talked about world's best workforce. I'll go ahead and make a motion to <laughs> hire Jerry. Jerry made oh, it each yep. under. You oh, seconding? Yeah. I'll second, sure. <laughs> motion by Jerry, seconded by Kurt. Other discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. We're very pleased to have you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to just say thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> what do you expect more from you then? <laughs> Item J, consideration to approve a medical leave beginning June 30th for eight weeks. Yep, you know, this works out really well. It's uh, someone on our custodial crew, and that works out really well with it being summertime. You know, we, we have summer help that comes in, so um, good timing on this person's um, surgery. I'll make a motion to approve the medical leave. Motion by Rob. Second. I'll, I'll second. Seconded by Jerry. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Consideration to approve the 1461 <coughs> principles contract. Yeah, they were probably the hardest group to work with, um, but we did make it through and we got negotiations done. Um, you know, we, we kind of followed suit on this one. Uh, we didn't add much of anything. The big thing is that they wanted to add more to their 403B. We thought that was important, and they thought it was important. So they'll be going from 1,500 um, matching to 3,000 in matching, and that's real common in, in all principal contracts. So we're excited for that, and we're thankful that they're willing to work for us again next year. What's the max on that that you can contribute? That. That's it right there? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Like and it's more. matching, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. I'll say the motion by Rob, seconded by Brenda. Further discussion? What were the percentages? Four and four? Uh, four and four. Yep. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Consideration to approve the 1416 LPN contract. The biggest thing there is we are taking apart the LPN and the tech. They're separate now. Uh, we will have an LPN or LPN on her own contract. No language changes, no anything, three and three. I'll make a motion. Motion by Jerry. Second? I'll second. Second by Rob. Enter the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Consideration to approve the 1416 Tech Aid contract. Again, we're changing this up pretty dramatically, actually. Hers has a many different language changes if you need to see any of them. I know most of you have seen the contract. If you need to see it, let me know. I can email it to you. Um, our leave year one will be 1716. Year two is 1887. Not really a percentage of change because it's a new contract. Uh, we're going to start completely fresh and make that a kind of a new, a new position of sorts. What was year two? Uh, 1887. Thank you. And just keep in mind that this is someone who has a four-year degree and you know knows a lot about IT. So. And this was on the before it was tied to before the Before it was LPN, which made no sense. This person needs to be an 11-month contract, and it makes no sense to be on a student contract day. So. Yeah, she had she had LPN pay pair of benefits, and she really wasn't. And followed either, the and followed the secretarial's of days off. Yeah, so. and the secretarial days off. It, it was. was it was one of those situations where that we've run into in the last couple of years. We kind of had to get her pulled into where she should be. You know, I worked really hard on hers. Hers took a lot of time, but it, it, importantly, I mean, it, it's good to have it on a different contract. <clears throat> and Pat, you entered in on that. Thank you very much for your yeah. help. Yeah. So look for a motion. I'll make a motion. Kurt. I'll second. Seconded by Rob. Other discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Consideration to approve the 1416 food service employee contract. Um, yeah, we, we did a few um, minor things there. Um, their clothing allowance, um, you can't get taxed for it. They wanted that kind of switched around where they can get their, they have to bring in a receipt now and get reimbursed that way. Um, we did that. Three and three was on the salary. Um, some small language changes made things a little more um, kosher, believe it or not. There were still, and Lori's shaking her head, because we found things in their contract that they hadn't sat down in a really long time and really gone through the whole thing. And so that's what we did this time, and it was it was worth it. We cleaned it up a lot, just small things that used to be a certain way. Um, they pushed really hard and um, really wanted lead cooks back, and uh, some of you may remember that, um, mm -hmm. if the day when we used to have lead cooks. And we, you know, from the district side, we just really thought that we've got Wendy in charge of that, and to have her do that was really important. She runs a great 
ship and, and so we stuck our grounds on that. Um, but other than that, it was a really good negotiations and I think they feel good about their contract. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the food service employee contract. Motion by Rob. I'll second. Seconded by Jerry. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. Item O, consideration to approve the recommissioning study proposal. Yeah, I'm not, um, I'll let Jerry and Rob hop in at any point here. <laughs> we, um, this is what I recommended to you a couple years ago, my first year as superintendent. Um, we talked a lot about doing a recommissioning study. I brought in an organization, you may or may not remember them, CTS. And um, they talked about the different rebates that you can get through Excel um, to get this recommissioning study does, get it done. Um, what this um, recommissioning study would do is tell you, you know, kind of where your deficiencies are, where you can get more money back. Um, you know, other superintendents have really used this as a tool when looking at, you know, fixing things. Um, there's other ways to do that. Um, a lot of people like to use a recommissioning study because it's all in one binder and all of your information's at your fingertips. Um, so we had already proposed that a couple years ago with that company. Um, we decided to kind of go on our own, see what we could do without um, hiring someone to do it. But it was good information to get. In the meantime, we've now come around and McKinnistry has come through and again, we filled out the application to just see what a recommissioning study would cost us to do. Um, you see the numbers here. Um, it has dramatically changed since the last time. I'm not sure why or, or what changed, but our numbers are, are very different. The cost study altogether is $66,000. The rebate this time was only $12,700. Um, we just don't qualify for as much. And a lot of that is some things that Dave has done, some things that anytime we've replaced something new, we've done, we've obviously gone with energy efficiencies um, and things like that. Um, it, it's no one's no one did anything differently, it's just how the rebate came out this time. So the cost after rebate is going to be $54,000. Um, I will let Jerry and Rob say, and I promise I'll stop talking after this, but at this point to spend money on a recommissioning study, it, it just, it isn't the right time in my opinion. But um, I'll let both of you kind of talk about your opinions on it. You know, you're saying you don't think it's the right time? I don't think spending $54,000 to get that recommissioning study right now, I think we should wait at least a year and see if the rebates go up. Because when I've talked to Excel about the rebates, and you know, last time us coming in at twenty three, twenty four thousand, mm -hmm. and this year coming in at 12700 how did it change so much in two years? It tells me that I think in a couple years it might go up again. Yep. I'd rather wait. Because those numbers shift around from Excel they all do. the time. Just depends on they the year do. and what their hot item is. Right. And I, and you know, the application is long and cumbersome, but I think you should have me do that a couple times a year. I don't want to necessarily, <laughs> but I think that if we keep applying, we're going to hit it one time that it's just going to be higher than usual. And there's no regulation on how many times you can apply for those rebates. So I just think right now is not the right time to do that. But um, the, the first first time they came around, the rebate amount it was, was 22, right 20, almost 23. I, I could look and find that for you. Even even say 22.5, that's sure. almost, it's not quite half of what they're offering now. Sure. I, I, and the study I, I would, I would love <laughs> to see uh, recommissioning study done. Mm -hmm. I would too. Um, I guess with, with that being the case, and we're gonna we're losing that much money over ten grand. I would say I'd, I wouldn't be adverse to tabling it for a year and, and re-review it. That. Um, that that's my opinion on it, Rob. But you know, we haven't talked about this at all about the tabling or not. So you know, I saw the numbers. I don't like the numbers, but timing almost seems good. I mean, a third set of eyes, an outsider looking at this facility um, completely in the neutral aspect. I mean, something we, I think we should do, um, whether it be done today <coughs> or six months. The only thing I don't know, and this is, of course, the unknown question is, the sooner we start, we'll, do we start saving money sooner? Would that actually help with this rebate difference? I don't know. 
And if we wait a year and it doesn't change, do we just lose a year of potential getting the recommissioning study done and then possible savings afterwards by just delaying the process? And there's no answer to it. It's just I'm throwing those ideas out to go. Mm -hmm. 12000 is a lot, but what's our potential savings if right. we do move forward? Get and a recommissioning study done this summer and then... And I guess my question to McKinstry would be, <clears throat> right, what I fail to understand is we haven't added new equipment. I mean, not large volume, have we, Dave? We haven't no, made big large. changes since last time we had the Other study than done. The construction that we added more equipment. Right. That was already done before right. that first right. CTS came through, yeah. I, I guess I'm a little perplexed why the, the difference well, is what it is. Well, and I called because I wanted to make Excel. sure it wasn't the two companies. And the way Excel explained it to me is they have nothing to do with this. This right, is Excel. absolutely nothing to do with them. So it's just a timing thing. And a mm -hmm. So I, I don't know that we need to put it out for a year because I, I agree with Rob. I think, personally, I don't think 54000 is a bad number because I think that's easily recoupable in savings. Mm -hmm. But if it's... You're right, the, the XL rebate actually does bother me quite a bit. That <laughs> ten would, grand is. Would we? Would we? But would, I, I also agree with you because I know there's area, there's problem areas within the buildings right. that need to be addressed, and the sooner they get addressed, some of that possibly could come out of health and safety to mm -hmm. make it yeah. be able to address it. But I just don't know if we need if we can rely on when the rebates are going to be there. I think if we have issues at the building, which we don't know. Uh, if this is something that should be done, uh, I think we just need to start doing that stuff. Can I make know? a suggestion? Mm -hmm. I would like to table it for a month and give me a little bit of time to ask some questions because mm -hmm. I deal with mm -hmm. McKinstry Street mm -hmm. some and I deal with Excel a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you sell my email to them. Those are all. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Let me just do some. I'll yeah, try to pick some good. brains with, with those companies mm -hmm. and see. I don't think a month or two is bad. I mean, the recommission stay is going to take a while to do as well. Mm -hmm. Because that we would just when we approve it, they still got to come in and go over all the facilities, mm -hmm. right? And then we get the binder after they put all that data together. So it's a it's a process that's going to take a while. Yeah, and I think in their <coughs> report here, they basically say you know it's almost like a ten month process. Mm -hmm. You know because they got to get the season, you got to get the air conditioning, you got to get the heating just to get the true reading. Yeah. <coughs> so it's about ten months process. Mm -hmm. So they've been coming in on the billing. Quite often, and yeah, it's not come in for two weeks. Here right. it is, and here we go. Okay. That's why I mean the cost is there. I, I think the benefit is good to have like a third set of eyes looking at this facility mm -hmm. systematically from end to end, top to bottom. Mm -hmm. It's needed, but yeah, that is why. Mm -hmm. Right. So, what would be your pleasure? I would like to make a motion to table it for a month and let me do some little bit. Of, I don't know, discovery might not be the right word, but. Uh, I just want to do some review with McKinstry. Oh, okay. Thank you for doing that, Jerry. Yeah. There's a motion by Jerry to table it. And the second came from yeah. Rob. Yeah. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is carried. The reports. Board members? <coughs> um, Kurt, would you like to wait for the committee reports? Uh, we had a finance yeah. committee. Should yeah. we? Okay. Any uh, any board members have anything for the cause? I would like to see in the near future um, an update on the uh, GCED building. Um, Brenda is on that. She meets with them a lot. Um, we are having. You've probably heard. I'm not sure why you're asking this question. Or if I heard haven't it. heard anything. Oh. That's why I'm asking. Okay, okay. We are running into a, a little snag. They were supposed to be tonight. You would have been approving the joint powers agreement. Um, that is not complete. Um, there are parts in it that don't protect Cannon Falls and Kenny Wanamango, Zambroda, and Goodhue. Um, there's parts in it that favor um, Red Wing, and I'm not comfortable with it. Our lawyer is not comfortable with it. They are working on that language. I know no one's at fault. We're just... Um, I'm not going to sign something that our community is going to pay for that doesn't protect us. And it's just really important that we do that. So it was supposed to be tonight. Um, you did get an email that they maybe have requested a um, special session. I don't know if we need to do that. They may just have to wait for our June 23rd 
board meeting um, to get that approval. Um, I'm not, you know, we'll, we'll have to see where you're all at and see when things are done. So that's where we're at. We can have them come, there's no changes in the building if that's what you're referencing. The funding and how we're going to get this building done has changed a little bit. You need to make sure that joint powers agreement when I present it to you is perfect and it protects Canna Falls. Why rush something if it's not quite right? We have a board meeting this Thursday, so if you have any questions, I can. Answer. What's the projected done date? 2006 start of the 2016 school year. Really? Okay. Okay. That was 2015. Yeah. And that's what I thought. That's why I asked because I haven't it heard is. anything. Okay. It is 15, 16. I'm yeah. sorry. You're right. You're right. 15, oh, 15 16. months from now. And they have had to cut. Um, Brenda, tell me if I'm wrong on this. They cut the playground. And the parking lot is now going they're just going to use the Red Wing parking lot until they have enough money saved up for their parking lot. And then they made the class sizes down to 650 square feet instead of the 750. So the room sizes was, were small. I thought they were very opposed. I think the one meeting that I went to, that was one of their concerns was the size of classrooms. So I'll, really I'll find out more on Wednesday. That's oh. kind of our update. And then they'll meet as a board on Thursday. But there's some changes. But that's any new building. You remember that when we went through our new building, too. So. But they haven't. So you're really looking at 15 months out, right? And the joint powers agreement is not ready. And Correct. they haven't broke ground yet. That's, it makes me a little bit nervous that the completion won't be done in time. But that's just me. That's okay. No, that's that's we, not my we're responsibility. Not holding, that's not we're not our holding responsibility. anything up. We right. haven't held nope. anything up. Right. So we're, right. we're doing well. I just haven't heard nothing for a long time. Yeah. And I talked yeah. to um, it's a great through question. Masms. I've talked there's, to some of the people that are involved much. in it, mm -hmm. the districts, and they're like, mm -hmm. yep. That's why I, I wish I had Sorry. it here for you tonight. I really do. No, that that's okay. I just haven't heard nothing for a long time. So, Anything else, board members? I was at the fan concert the other day, steel drums. And that section over there by the where the steel drums are? You know what, could decorate that up to be more like a steel drum place? I know they got to deaden it because it's the, the brick walls. Make it more like a hut or something. Or Palm trees. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> we just got a comment from Nora. <laughs> <laughs> Nora, Nora, how do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> hey, every time I hear him, I want to have a Corona. That's all I know. All right, all right. Let's pull it back in. <laughs> Um, student <laughs> report. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, what's new? Sure. Uh, first, I would like to start out by saying uh, last Wednesday we had the academic awards at the school here. Um, and according to Ms. Keese, um, $62,250 was distributed throughout the senior class. So, I mean, coming from a town this size, that's really amazing. So, that was great. Um, if I have it right, uh, last Thursday was the band concert. Is that right? Okay. Yep. Last Thursday was a band concert. Still drums too. Still, still drums. Need a um, hut. Um, and then it, again, if I have my facts right about sports, because the weather has been uh, uh, really a dismay lately. But uh, softball, I think they had um, three games last week. Um, uh, Hayfield on Monday, Stewartville on Tuesday. Um, and I think there's a cast in because um, they, they really ha they have been trying to squeeze all these games in so that it, so that they can qualify for uh, subsections. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, and then their uh, uh, their game was rescheduled to tomorrow uh, versus Byron um, uh, track um, let, uh, this past Saturday they hosted uh, their HBL conference championship, the women play six, the men's place eighth. Um, and then uh, uh, Tuesday, so tomorrow, um, they are competing in subsections at Medford. Um, and then sections for them is May 27th and 29th at Winona. Um, for baseball, um, this past Saturday, uh, they played against Randolph and they won 10 to nothing. So that was a pretty exciting one to be at. Um, the um, HVL championship game was uh, scheduled for tonight, but it was canceled. Um, so they begin subsections on Thursday. Um, this Friday, um, the senior class, whoever signed up, will be going to Valley Fair. Um, so that's one of the 
thing uh, that's been kind of on our bucket list, I guess, to kind of uh, achieve that before we graduate. So you should have uh, seen how he presented this to me in the hallway. Oh, with the big eyes, Miss Keys. We've never gotten a field trip ever. And I, I do understand. I do understand that, that we don't, as a school, do that anymore because it's like a seventh grade. Thing, but uh, <laughs> but I think it's more fun to go as a senior class, yeah. so that's why. That's why I or did you just want to go back to seventh grade and start over? <laughs> no, because no, just that's, like that's, okay. that's okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, let's see. We have a choir concert on Wednesday, um, just for the high school. Wednesday, or I think it's Thursday. No. Uh, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, Thursday is middle school. school is Thursday. Thursday is yeah. And tomorrow night's. Middle school band. Thank goodness for board meetings. <laughs> Steel drums. <too. laughs> You're welcome. Um, graduation will be next uh, Friday the 30th. That's been postponed as no one told you. Until <laughs> <laughs> after Valley Fair. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, we need to add an extra day. No. Um, then we'll be out of here. Unfortunately. <laughs> really unfortunately. Um, well, you come to the next meeting, though, right, June? Yeah, no, I will talk about that, though. And then uh, we have been, uh, 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 I've kind of uh, been relieved of my student, <laughs> my student council duties. We elected the new board, but I am continuing to work on the, uh, the crest for official purposes that we talked about here. We can pass on. These are just uh, rough sketches that, uh, um, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, harder sh shades, but he's been uh, working on um, uh, the rough sketch that you see there of the crest that uh, we've been working on. Um, and there's a lot of things that go along with that. Um, and I know we talked about um, uh, the, the words around the edges, and those um, those currently on there can uh, be modified. They're just on there right now, just to show where they uh, where they would c go. We also talked about having um, three words on there, which obviously that can also be um, thing something that can be uh, modified along with that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, and then we also talked about um, getting the school involved in um, choosing the words that uh, we think best represents our school. So I think. Um, something that we're going to do is um, we're going to get the school lantern involved and we're going to have um, some kind of a survey um, to do it that way. Um, if you guys think that sounds like a good idea. And I, um, I'll be continuing to work on this for the rest of the school year. Um, I'll be ha happy to come back for your, your June 23rd uh, board meeting to share any more progress we have. Um, it's um, uh, because I do think it's going to be more of an ongoing thing to make sure everything's right. And I mean, there's uh, um, legality things as well um, that we need to take into consideration, uh, making sure we're not stealing any um, logos or symbols from anybody, and that can all be cleaned up um, once we get farther in the process. But that's what we have so far. So. How many days are left before you graduate? Uh, yeah. <coughs> um, I think it's what is it seven, seven six. I don't. I'm not. I'm not keeping track. You know. <laughs> he's, he's done. done. He's, he's done. done. He's done. He's he's done. done. I am pretty much he's done. done. And he's been relieved from student <laughs> council. AP tests and stuff. So. So, so you guys can take your survey on the bus ride up to Valley Fair. And What's that? Oh yeah, I'll be working all the way up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looks good. Yeah. What's up? Yep. Oh, I thought you said something. I, yeah, I said a lot of. Seniors appear to have been relieved. Well, you'll have this every year about this. Thank you. Thanks, Yeah, looks good. Keep going. Yep, we will be. Thank you, Jake. The uh, gold blue thing that's that goes down the river. Baseball. The baseball game. Yeah, won't be made up. Tomorrow's supposed to be the makeup day, but uh, Lawrence has a commitment, so he can't play. We beat them head to head. I think yeah, we yeah. should have that. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's two votes. Yeah. I say so. Okay. That's <laughs> three. Okay. Upcoming meeting, uh, next regular board meeting, June 23rd. You can see the list. We have plenty of things to do there, and we'll add that recommissioning. It doesn't necessarily have to be on there as you 
get it completed, that's, we'll take our lead from Jerry on that. Yeah. Public forum. Anyone wish to speak to the cause? I would like to just uh, uh, publicly thank the play for the work on the academic awards ceremony. Um, she does a remarkable job. This is a really busy time of year for her getting that ready and getting graduation ready. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate the fact that all I do is she hands me a stack of things and mm -hmm. says, Science. this is what you need to do and uh, sets me on my way. So um, thank you, Doug, for all of your hard work and, and everybody really appreciates all the time and effort you put into, into these two events especially. Okay, really noted, thank you. Okay, we've reached that time. I would look for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Why? Nobody. Randy, you're a little slow tonight. Thanks for Second. Second. <laughs> Second. Second by Kurt. We move Kurt to our Further discussion? All in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> we are finished. I can't eat the mouse. Okay. Never mind. I thought you were in the motion. Just so I'm still on the